Okay, this is going to be day 26, warm up three. I had to do another warm up because of these brilliant comments. And that's brilliant with an E. Always remember from now on, you spell brilliant with an E in all correspondence that will keep your com conversations and so forth separate when we Google you later on when you become famous. Uh, so this is Lori, a uh, world famous researcher. And uh, she uh, talks about the Pakistan uh, Atomic Elec uh, Energy Commission. And this is something that Deep Uranium told me way back when, that the Kazakhstan and the Uzbeki truckers that they were bringing down, they're bringing these, uh, Kazakhstan has 40% of the uranium. They have all these Uzbeki truckers uh, that are these uh, kind of jihadist uh, things, people they, the CIA has radicalized. They're using them to truck this uranium down. And after the 2005 Uranium One deal, everyone's thinking it's 2010. It actually started with 2005 with Frank Justra. They're taking it down to Pakistan to enrich in Pakistan. Pakistan had started an atomic program, which was very controversial because it did weapons grade uranium. And this was in 1980. Uh, the first um, facility, you can see they're, here they're gonna use UF-6 gas and so forth. The UF-6 gas never went to Russia. It went to, I believe, uh, this one, this uh, Chasma. So um, so anyway, the, the bottom line is there's two plants, and they built a second plant, and the second plant was far larger than the original one that was built uh, by Khan, by a guy named Khan. I believe he was the first prime minister of India, and uh, excuse me, of Pakistan, and he got their nuclear program started. This is going to be the gateway for all Middle Eastern weapons programs and uh, energy programs. Every Middle Eastern country now, I can see it now, is going to be starting a, a nuclear program for fuel and weapons. Th th this is far larger than just UAE. It's far larger than just the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. You're going to see weapons programs, hidden weapons programs, not just Iran, across the board in North Africa and the Middle East. I'm going to say it right now. As soon as I saw this research, I was like, oh my gosh, um, this this is it. This is the answer. So the second piece to this is someone did about this uh, uh, surveillance system uh, for shipping. And I pinned the tweet, it was so good. I mean, these are the tweets, or these are the comments that change everything. This is an abstract, you can see the abstract method here for port and cargo security. And this is a method for decreasing the delay of shipping of containers. This is the port of Kasim system. The containers are tagged with a device originating at the uh, uh, originating, originating port with certain criteria, they can be put under surveillance, under camera, the whole way the containers go to the destination port. Read Charleston there, Charleston, South Carolina. Communications devices such as satellites are used to track the containers every step of the way. Every step of the way. Where have we heard that? Brilliant PACTS2 uh, Department of Homeland Security. That's going to be the brilliant application right there, PACTS2. Uh, Every step of the way, yeah, you know, read Soraya Begum, satellite expert, read Hina Alvi, Suparkor, Suparko, satellite expert, okay, until they reach the destination port, and that's going to be Charleston, South Carolina. Consin continuously and periodically transmitting to the destination port the results of their um, surveillance, uh, of their uh, position and surveillance, okay? If the information embedded remains consistent with the profile, then the container spent little or no time, little or no time, at the port of inspection between the point of origin and the point of destination. This is going to be all the Navy ports. This is going to be Norfolk. This is going to be Jacksonville. This is going to be Tampa. This is going to be the Navy Yard in, in Washington. This is going to be the uh, Bayonne, uh, the, the Newark uh, Navy Yard. It's going to be the Brooklyn Navy Yard. It is the Uranium Railroad. This I'm going to rename this the Uranium Railroad. I don't know why I didn't see this. Um, Deep Uranium told me about this at least a hundred days ago. So I feel really stupid in the sense that I didn't pick this up any sooner. But here it is, uh, if you want to see all the layout. This is Raul Pindi. This is kind of the traditional home of Pakistan. And then of course you've got Islamabad uh, just to the north there, the, the new capital, which is its own state, Islamabad. Islamabad. But this is kind of like ISI and the military uh, center still and the homeland, the heartland homeland of a PAC ISI. Then you've got the uh, 
Chasma reactor, which is so much larger, and then the Kundian, I might have those backwards, 1980 and then the 2006. This is because the reason they build this gigantic reactor is because of the flow of the Uzbeki truckers bringing the Kazakh uranium. That's going to be the key. And then, of course, the Bowl of Huggies happens here. This is the Sloop John B. This is uh, Shock uh, 7B here. Uh, where Imra, I believe you're going to find Ram Emanuel investing in these things, just knowing Ram. I love you, Ram. I love you, brother, but it's your signatures are all over this thing. Anyway, this is where uh, we're going to kill the tw 12 farmers and we're going to build some kind of hospital usually. And then we're going to use nuclear waste. We can use it in, in terms of uh, radiation um, products, diagnostic products, and so forth. And then, of course, this is going to be the drug line from Sialkot going all the way up to the on the Punjab border. But you'll notice, again, these reactors are still on the edge of Punjab. They're still under the control of Imran's dad at PSP. So uh, brilliant work by two brilliant researchers who just kind of cracked the whole case open. Now, what I love about these things, you can zoom in, you can feel confident about zooming in. We can learn about these different uh, parcels, getting down to the parcel number, and then finding out what was redeveloped on the dead 12 farmers' uh, uh, parcels, and then also looking at shipments going back and forth here. There is no, there is not gonna be any nuclear regulatory commission uh, for this, for uh, trucking companies over here. And these Uzbeki truckers are then going to move to the United States when Hillary becomes um, uh, uh, Secretary of State. So, oops, there, it's gone. So.